This Week on Profile. Tammy Kahn, Executive Director, Houston Children's Museum. So what's a typical Tammy Kahn day? It's an early start, start around 7. The great thing is I get to start off going through the museum. And I like to walk through. We have staff already working at that time of day. So I get to go through, listen to their comments, get feedback from them. And I get to walk through this exquisite mind factory that we built and it's hushed and it's quiet. And then I get to my office and everything's turned on and we're ready to go and it's a busy day every day. <laughs> There's something incredibly energizing about coming into this place where these people work with such great passion and enthusiasm and you know it's a small business. It's we go through insurance and you know legal issues and hiring and firing and, and all that kind of drudgery. But when you come into this gorgeous place with these incredible thinking people, most of us start pretty early. Um, some of us work really late. It's just it's an energy high all day long. How long have you been in Houston? since 1982. And why Houston? How did you get here? I didn't want to come to Houston. I uh, thought I was going to New York or Chicago. I worked at an ad agency in Dallas right after college. And I uh, came down, was interviewed by Ogilvy & Mather, which was at that time a 400-person shop. It was a huge ad agency. And uh, I actually had enough spunk or idiocy to come in and say, well, you know, if you hire me, I'm going to be gone in a year and a half or two years. I want to go to New York or Chicago. Because that to me was the epitome of where big ideas happened, and especially in the ad agency business. And they were foolish enough to hire me. <laughs> and then I stayed. <laughs> so how do you go from that rebellious, I'm going to be in New York and Chicago, ad agency mentality, to running a children's museum? Um, it's, it's about ideas, so the transition isn't hard. It's about really understanding what the community is, but the reality is I met the love of my life and he was going to live in Houston. And then I also fell in love with Houston. Um, I grew up in a small town of about 100,000 people out in West Texas. And my family had been there for generation after generation. I knew the people whose names were carved on the stone in the library, you know, that kind of thing. And when I got to Houston, as opposed to Dallas, which would sort of been in my backyard, Houston had that feeling of being a small town. And I wanted to feel connected and have an opportunity to really, not so much get to meet people from different walks of life, but to really feel a part of the institution itself and feel like you had some real meaning in life. And Houston's probably one of the easiest places in the world to do that. So take me through the process of how you became first affiliated with the Children's Museum and then how you got to the position that you're in now. I had been working, uh, I, I left the ad agency business and um, thought I was going to be a stay-at-home mom for a year or two and just really climbed the walls. My husband's family were immigrants, his mom and dad built businesses together and he could see the signs that <laughs> I needed to get out of the house. So I was really fortunate. There was the new team over at the Museum of Fine Arts. Peter Marzio had just come to town. There was all this excitement about not thinking of museums as traditional institutions. And they needed someone to help with the nitty gritty um, marketing and messaging. And I was lucky enough to work there for about 10 years. And that's when the early onset um, midlife crisis occurred. And I really wanted to do something that was perhaps pithier. And um, I went back to University of Houston, got an executive MBA, met extraordinary thinkers in that program, many of whom now are leading uh, major companies and institutions in Houston. And um, then fortunately, I had raised my children at the Children's Museum. The founding director um, had another opportunity. She left. She just built this incredible building. And um, they were looking for somebody to replace her. So I walked in almost 14 years ago. And it's, it's been a really quick 14 years. <laughs> Henry, I gave him my list of stuff. I know I'm going next to, uh, yeah, I better take my glasses with me. And then we're going to run over to the science lab. Great. Morning, Lori. This is the Genius Factory. Um, people who are electrical engineers, artists, uh, all different kinds of disciplines. You don't go to college and just get one degree to come work here. All these people have to be constant problem solvers. These are the guys that come in and work around the public, but predominantly when the public's not there, they put everything back together again. 
And in fact, one of the most complex things we're doing right now, um, the Dan's working on, is taking those cubes, those blocks, which are meant to represent different material properties, and he's not only creating the fun shape so that it will stand up to repeated abuse, but those have been impregnated with chips that the stuff sorter out there can read so the kids can try to understand what the properties of a particular material are. It's very inspiring around these kinds of folks. Okay, guys. Thank you for meeting. Can we go over this really quickly? Um, you want to do it out in the wild? Or in the it's wherever you want to do. You know how I can't really see. So, all right. So this is the latest. What are we doing? Did we bring those pictures up? Yeah. That's we as big like, as we can get them. Well, we can make this a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. This a little bit smaller to make it bigger, but you won't be able to see the logo and you won't be able to see the typeface. All right. Well, sounds like we can't do that. And then where's my? There's my cover. So everything from the magazine to the t-shirt design, all the membership information that goes yeah. out. So this is your internal graphics and, and production yeah. department in here. Branding. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do everything from turn out the newsletter to rebrand. And it was a huge effort to rebrand the museum. Plus, they had to keep doing their other work. I mean, there are museums all over the country, like the Boston Children's Museum, the Science Center in Fort Worth, great museums, but they elect to close down when they go through an expansion as significant as what we've gone through. Mm -hmm. We kept the doors open. I think we closed one day, maybe, when we had to turn off the power to connect machines, you know. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, everybody that works here continued to do their normal job, which is not normal, and then, and then layered on the rest of it. And this character is, um, the flip is, is totally cool. The idea is that you can go into um, libraries around the country within the next two years. It's a program that okay. we're developing um, with Institute of Museum and Library Services money based on programming that we had been doing here for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And basically we take um, early literacy books and we put them into little bags and we put them with the characters or we put them with whatever manipulables will help parents tease out the meaning of the books. Mm -hmm. There's a how-to in English and Spanish. And then um, it's, it's been incredibly successful. You can check it out from the library with your um, library card. But we need some way of marketing that. I mean, it's going to be checked out through libraries and in some cases museums. You've got to create some type of branding around it. And this is the creation. Can you try that? Let's just see what we yeah. can do. All right. Thanks, okay. guys. Thanks, guys. See you later. When we were, you know, preparing for the expansion and we opened March 14th, we put in a little photo booth down here and then we went online and Comcast was our partner to encourage people to send in their um, photos. Okay. And if you look closely, you will see where every one of these giant portraits of kids' faces from Houston are actually composed of those little family portraits that were taken here and sent in to us on the website. And there are over 100,000 that make this. Isn't that cool? I mean, and these are our kids. We have got the grayest looking kids in the world because they're from all over the world. Isn't that fun? So yeah, we're going to continue really cool this. Isn't that the coolest? By the way, anybody can do this. It's a computer program, but to have blown it up to the size that we did gives us this great impact. What we were trying to do, obviously, was find some neat way that everyone could participate and see themselves here when we open. How would you describe yourself? Probably high energy. I'm either on or off, demanding, um, highly self-critical, which unfortunately translates into being critical of everything and everyone around me, always wanting to make something better. Short-term memory, I don't hold grudges. Um, I don't like to be combative. Um, I just want to get things done. You know, I feel like we don't have that much time in this life. There's a lot you need to get done. So some of us are fortunate enough to be in places where we are being allowed the chance to have that reward. You think it's even da more dangerous? Yeah, because you can't stop yourself. Right now, if you want to stop. Yeah, but if you want to feel any momentum, your 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 body has to do it. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Now, how? I mean, what if I'm? If you're a little, that's you're supposed to put your hand.